I've decided to make today uh, jelly and it is a strawberry rhubarb jelly. Now just the sound of that just sounds absolutely delicious. If you're a huge strawberry rhubarb uh, pie kind of person or strawberry rhubarb jam kind of person, the reason why I chose to make it uh, at this time of the year because it's spring coming on summer and I'm not making it with fresh uh, produce, with fresh strawberries, with fresh rhubarbs. And the reason why is of course whenever I have the choice, I love to make my foods with fresh produce, with fresh products, fresh fruits and vegetables and I did have some still frozen in my freezer and I didn't want to waste. So I've decided to take my frozen strawberries and rhubarb and make a jelly from it. It's a very simple recipe to make and uh, I think it's going to be absolutely delicious. Before we get started, if you like my channel, if you like my content, don't be shy. Hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost a thing, but it does show support for my channel if you do like the content. And if you hit that notification bell, it'll help you to know when I have new videos coming up. An easy way to do jams or jellies from fruits that you have frozen already in your freezer is that when you do freeze them is to mark the quantities on your your bags or your jars or however you freeze them and that way you know that you have the exact amount that you need when you come to do your recipe sometimes if you freeze it and don't mark how much you have on it when it comes when it comes time to make something with it you're not quite sure the quantities because you know what happens when you freeze things they sometimes pack down some of the juice comes out they deflate they get softer so if you measure in advance you know you're ex using exactly the, the amount that you need to create a perfect recipe. You're going to start with one and a half quarts of strawberries and you're going to start with one and a half pounds of your rhubarb. I'm going to start by crushing my strawberries. So you want to put them in your, your dish, not too thick. You want them just like in single layers and crush them in single layers to be able to extract the most juices from them. So just a single layer of strawberries. I have to start wearing an apron. And you just take your potato masher and crush your strawberries. I just put my strawberries back in my measuring cup and now I'm going to set this aside for a minute and look after my rhubarb. So for the rhubarb, it's recommended to either run them through a food processor or a blender or something like that to crush them down because I think they're probably um, it's harder to extract the juice from the rhubarb and transfer this over to the bowl Make sure not to lose any of those great juices because that's what we need to make the jelly. We want the juice. Now to make this jelly, what I need to get is I need to, to extract from the fruit uh, three and a half cups of juice. The best way to get this is to just use a colander and a cheesecloth. Add your fruit directly to your cheesecloth and let the juices kind of drip. You can squeeze it a little bit if you want to get more juice out of it, if you're missing a little bit of juice, but the less you squeeze the, the cloth and, and let it drip naturally, the clearer your jelly will be. If a clear jelly is not something that's very important to you, no worries, squeeze away. I'm going to add the rhubarb first, just so I make sure to get that good rhubarb flavor, and so the strawberries will drip kind of through the rhubarb as well just because I feel that there's going to be a lot more liquid inside of the strawberries too than in the rhubarb so I want to make sure to get that the tartness of the rhubarb in here. So there you go, so you just just let it drip. Here I have my three and a half cups of the juice and the leftover pulp. Another little tip as well, if ever you're running out of time and it's lots of things are going on in the summer and you have your rhubarbs, you have your fresh strawberries, but you just don't have time to make jam. You don't have time to go through the entire canning process. What you can do with this beautiful juice from your fruit is you can freeze it. So you throw that in your freezer, make sure you label it well because you won't be able to tell what this is. And when you have time, then you can make your jelly or your jam. So now we're just going to add this to a pot. 
And then we add to this six cups of sugar. We are going to be water bath canning these jars. So once again, as usual, never cut down on the amounts. You do need your six cups of sugar. It all helps with the safety of preservation. If you're not familiar with canning and water bath canning um, or steam canning, because I'm actually going to be steam canning this, but you can do a water bath if you don't have a steam canner, be sure to check out my video. I have a video um, on my steam canner uh, that you will see that I am absolutely in love with. I also have another video as well for water bath canning if you're not familiar with water bath canning and you don't have a steam canner. So like I say, you can either water bath can your jars of jelly or you can steam can them as well. So either technique is fine. Just make sure that you stick with the quantity recommended in the recipes to ensure a end safe product. So you're gonna add your six cups of sugar to your, your juice and stir that well. Now we move everything over to the stove. We're going to put it on a medium to high heat to bring this to a boil. Now when you're making jams and jellies, especially with pectins, and this one um, is calling for a liquid pectin. So I have a pouch of liquid pectin which is 85 milliliters and which is pretty much the equivalent of uh, about three and a half ounces. So you have to move fairly quickly because you don't want your jam to set in your pot um, before you have a chance to transfer it over to your jars. So I have my canner heating up, I have my caps warming up, I have my canning station um, all prepared on the other side of my kitchen. Just for when the jelly is ready so that I can quickly transfer it over to the jarring station and put them quickly in the jars so they don't set in my pot. I have to bring this to a boil and once it's boiling I add my liquid pectin I boil it hard for one minute, stirring constantly, remove it from the heat, skim off the foam, and then once that's done, transfer it quickly over to my jars. Now that this has come to a good hard boil, I'm going to add the liquid pectin in, and I'm going to bring it back to a boil. Once it starts boiling again, I will time it for one minute, stirring constantly. So let's time this now for one minute. Remove it from the heat. So this is the foam that it creates that you want to skim off the top. It doesn't really have a, a, an, an ill taste to it. Um, it just kind of looks nicer in your bottles if you do remove that. Um, be sure not to take too long taking this foam off the top because like I say, you don't want your jelly to set. Be careful not to dip your fingers in the hot jelly. Now let's get this jelly inside the jars. So my station's all set up, so my jars are hot, my caps are hot, the jelly's still hot, not set in my pot yet. So let's get this into the jars so we can get them on the stove and process them. So I need to fill my jars, leaving one quarter inch headspace to allow them to properly seal. I'm going to pour the jelly in the jar. Oh my god, that smells good. <laughs> You always want to wipe the rims of your jars with water if you're doing jelly just to make sure that your caps properly adhere to the top of the bottle. Then you grab your caps, set them on top, center them. Then you take your rings, put it on, fingertip tight. Oof, the bottles are hot. <laughs> I can't put it on tight. Hang on. It's so hot that I can't even touch the bottles. So just fingertip tight for your rings. Take your jar lifter, transfer them over to your canner. Now, as you can see, my steam canner is on there. It's already nice and hot. So I'm going to transfer my jars over. And keep doing this until you've got all your jelly inside of your jars. I think it's going to set nicely. I can already see that it's starting to want to set inside the pot and inside of my uh, funnel. So excited. The jars are all in my canner. Now all I need to do is put the cover on and wait till this, turn the heat up and wait till this comes to the appropriate temperature for the altitude that I live in. 
Once this gets to the pro proper temperature, I process it for 10 minutes. Once the 10 minutes are up, I leave it inside the steam canner without removing the cover for five minutes. And then once I remove the cover, then it's done. If you're doing the water bath canning method, it's the same processing time. You're going to put your, can your jars in a, in a pot, cover them with water, one inch above your jars, let them boil for 10 minutes. And once it's done, let them sitting in your pot for five and then you remove. As you can see, the canner has gotten up to where I need it here for my altitude, so now I just time this for 10 minutes and then it'll be done. I have ended up with six beautiful jars of strawberry rhubarb jelly and I have a little bit extra that we can actually taste right away so I'm looking forward to giving it a good taste. And remember, you should always write on top of your jars what it is that you have inside. Always remove your rings, never store them with your rings on top. Make sure you leave them sitting though for 24 hours with the rings on and after 24 hours then you remove your rings and store them in a cool, uh, dry, um, dark place and they can keep really well for up to a year so if you like this video if you like this content don't be shy hit that subscribe button and be sure to check back again soon to see what other content i will have out